Greetings everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host Captain Ryan. Today's YouTube video is a short and quick little battle here in my Fletcher in World of Warships. As the battle gets underway, the first thing I'm going to point out here is its domination match mode, and you will notice that there's no islands at all on the minimap. That's a little bit of a replay bug, and I'm not entirely sure why those uh, islands didn't pop up, but I can tell you that I did initially load into this battle quite late by comparison, and it wasn't for the first few seconds of the game after the battle started until my camouflage, and, well, everybody else's camouflage, also loaded in as well. Now, I am headed down to the C cap point. We've got teammates going to the A cap point and nobody yet going to the B cap point. Now, there's an enemy Kutuzov up there. He's pushing up and around this island here, and I kind of feel like he's going to try and skirt that island, or at the very least, that's kind of where he looks like he's going to go. So I fire off both sets of torpedoes in that general direction, and that's when the enemy Z-23 pops up. Now, this destroyer doesn't have as good a detection range as the Fletcher, but I do wander into that range, and I decide I'm going to open up on him. He's pretty much isolated on this side of the island, which is unfortunate for him, as I do start landing some hits on him. And of course, because I'm spotting him, everybody's shooting at him. But he turns, he disappears out of line of sight, unfortunately. I had already had torpedoes headed that direction, and managed to secure a first blood on him quite accidentally. Sometimes you just find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Although, for my torpedoes, it was the right place at the right time. My team is now uncontested at the A cap point and uncontested at the C cap point. The enemy team, for the most part, looking at the situation on the minimap as well as what we can observe around us, is pretty much all headed to the A cap point. Not a single one of them has bothered to come down here to the C cap point. Although it is entirely possible that Z-23 was coming down here to the C cap point and then got spotted. Or he was headed down here, spotted all of these cruisers and whatnot heading this direction, decided not, nah, screw that, going to B, and then I spotted him anyway. Which, I uh, Again, didn't really matter in the long run because he managed to get taken out by one of the torpedoes that I'd launched at somebody else completely. Now, my team has both the A and the C cap point. We're up on points, we're gaining points far more rapidly than the enemy team because we have two cap points, the enemy team has no cap points, and the enemy team is down one of their destroyers, giving my team a destroyer advantage. Not only are they down one destroyer, they're down their tier 8 destroyer that has Hydro. Which means, even if he is able to sneak up on us, that is, lay an ambush behind an island, he's not going to be able, they're not going to be able to see us without having that Hydro from that ship. Now I push up here into the B cap point because why not? Capping XP is sweet and delicious and it's definitely worth it if you're trying to grind a ship. Remember that not only does capping win games, but capping XP is one of the better ways, if you're not a super Unicum or Unicum level player, to gain XP in battle that can help you quickly advance up those ranks. You also earn quite a bit of credits from doing it as well. Now, as I come up here, nobody's spotting me, nobody's detecting me, and I've actually got a little bit of a replay bug here. I'm targeting the Turpets that's back behind that island near that Iowa, and I fire off my torpedo sets here where his lead indicator, before he disappeared, was going to be. And I fire off both of those, kind of thinking that He's going to be back there behind that island. He's probably not going to try and slow down, change his course or direction, because he thinks he's safe. And because nobody's targeting him, if that's the skill that he has. And there's that Turpitz sailing in that nice straight line that I was hoping that he would. Now, that enemy Iowa up there, he's stopped and actually started reversing. 
And that could be a little bit of a problem for me just sitting in this position because that's going to make shooting at him kind of a bit difficult, but it's also going to make shooting at him for my teammates a bit difficult as well. That Iowa does disappear and that Turpitz does opt to slam on his brakes and start turning in, so my torpedoes managed to miss him entirely and I was really, really disappointed. Enemy cruiser very low health trying to push up behind an island here and He's kind of at the max end of my range, and I'm hoping that maybe I can land some hits on him and finish him off. I fire off a set of torpedoes at that Iowa where he's reversing, kind of hoping that he'll stop and just stay there. But if he continues to reverse, what will end up happening is my torpedoes will miss him completely. Managed to set a fire on that Turpitz. Don't quite manage to secure the kill on that Hipper that was back over at the A camp point. The enemy team has lost that hipper as well as the destroyer that I initially killed, which means we're still up on ships, as they have taken out one of our destroyers, and I do believe it was the Mahan that was desperately trying to run away from the A cap point, and the enemy team, which pretty much all pushed up to the A cap point, did effectively chase him down. Now, this Turpitz up here has got himself in a very bad situation. He's on fire yet again as I managed to set him on fire. I do manage to hit torpedoes home on that Iowa, which is excellent for me. I caused some reasonable amount of damage, and I managed to take out that Turpitz with fire. Now, I want to get moving because he was within his torpedo range, and I know torpedoes love smoke screens. They are magically attracted to them. So I start moving on now that he's dead, but I don't think he managed to get his torpedoes away, which is kind of good for me. Now that Iowa up there is still flooding from my torpedo hits, and you can see how quickly he's flooding here. The only question is, are my second set of torpedoes, which are headed his direction, going to hit him before he gets taken out by somebody else or floods to death? They do manage to hit him before he gets taken out, but I'm pretty confident at that point he would have flooded to death from my torpedoes anyway which would have been nice. Now, enemy smokescreen up there has the Kutuzov inside of it, and I fire off those torpedoes kind of dead center into that smokescreen, hoping that whatever's in there will remain sitting there. Looking at the team situation, though, the enemy team has managed to kill one of our other destroyers. That just leaves me alone in this battle as the sole destroyer on my team. But you'll notice that I'm the sole destroyer on the team, and I have full health. I fire off my second set of torpedoes at this battleship over here, this North Carolina, as I manage to kill the Kutuzov sitting in his smokescreen. I'm trying desperately to finish off this North Carolina as he's very, very low health, and I'm hoping that I can set him on fire and take him out. Enemy torpedoes coming in there, targeting the battleships behind me. The North Carolina manages to die, but unfortunately for me, there are other ships within that 12 kilometer range that can see me, and that's a little bit of problem for me. I don't really want to slam on my brakes and use my smoke screen as I'm coming up behind this island here and there are two ships that I need to be careful of back over here. There is a destroyer back over here, but there's also a Baltimore and I'm concerned that as I'm going to come up and around this island, that Baltimore is going to use his radar ability. But there's also an enemy Turpitz up here and that enemy Turpitz, thanks to the buffs on their secondary, does have reasonable secondary range. So I pop my smoke screen and I'm trying to break line of sight by using it. But of course I do have that Baltimore up there and that could be a serious problem. Baltimore does hit me. Now this is a little bit of a mistake on my part as that Turpitz disappears. I fire those sh torpedoes behind the lead indicator kind of thinking that Turpitz is going to stop, slam on his brakes, and possibly reverse as our Iowa is pushing up here, but not utilizing my smoke screen at all. There's the enemy destroyer that I was concerned about, and I'm trying to get shots off at that Turpitz, who I did effectively cause flooding on to try and set him on fire. Kind of hoping that my torpedoes will hit him, but from the looks of it, nope, they've completely missed, and I'm kind of wondering what the hell the deal with that is. Of course, I can't see anything because that 
Enemy Destroyer has lit a smokescreen, being a team player for not only that Tirpitz, but the Baltimore as well. And because the Iowa is not taking advantage of my smokescreen, he's basically allowed himself to get taken out. Now that Baltimore pops his radar, but he is far enough away that I'm not too concerned about much of his fire, and I'm definitely not concerned about the secondary fire from that Turbitz. When dealing with radar, one of the best things you can do is effectively just turn and run away. As I've mentioned before, I'm trying to get myself outside of the range of that radar, but I'm also opening up the distance, making it more and more difficult for anybody who is shooting at me to hit me as I've got more time to maneuver. Now that Tirpitz is maneuvering hard, so those torpedoes from the first set are going to miss as the radar times out, and I drop back into concealment. But I fire off the second set well in front of that lead indicator, kind of hoping that I can nail him. My team is now in the process of capping the A cap point. The enemy team's not gaining any more points, but they're down to four ships, while my team has only lost four ships. I'm hoping that my torpedoes can hit that Tirpitz and finish him off as we're coming up to the end of this battle, but the answer is going to be nope. We managed to kill yet another ship and secure victory. I managed to do a whopping and exact 132,000 damage in that battle, surprisingly enough, and a good number of torpedo hits, and a first blood with a devastating strike. Always a wonderful thing. But of course... I didn't get a crack, and I didn't get a Confederate or a High Caliber, but I did do a reasonable job in this battle. I did come in top of the team for XP earned, and that's partly due, again, to capping. Sweet, sweet capping XP. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me in this channel, as well as gain access to some of my World of Warships replays early, and some of them that don't quite make it to YouTube, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. You can donate as little as a dollar a month to gain access to those replays. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can send it to my email, and if you'd like to watch me play World of Warships, among other games, live in the mornings on weekdays around 6 to 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and usually on Sundays between 10 and 11.30 Pacific Standard Time, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.